everyone, this is Timothy Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Oh, what a fun stream yesterday. Had a really good time with that. We spoke about the Giants. We spoke about the Kafka. We spoke about everything. Last 45 minutes was a blast because of the fact that we um, basically subscribers were just naming giant players just throwing out names of giant players and i was giving out their names their numbers their colleges how they were effective in the pros for the giants i probably got 98 percent of what was being pitched to me right even going back to the old timers some of the guys from the 50s but it was a lot of fun one thing i wanted to talk about because there's there's two things we want to talk about today two things devin lloyd the linebacker from utah will he be a target for the giants we whiffed on, of course, Josh Allen. We whiffed on taking the Parsons. Is the fifth time, or the or I should rephrase it, is the fifth pick or the seventh pick the charm for us finally going out and getting a linebacker that we so desperately need? I want to talk about Giant fans in general, though. Just, just a small segment of them. At one point in time, when we were going through the hiring process, when we were going looking at these guys, when we were having realistic expectations, I kept thinking about Marty Schottenheimer again. It's a gleam, man. There's a gleam. Let's get the gleam, all right? Let's go. I saw the gleam like Marty did, that we had fans that were setting realistic expectations, that were being smart, that were understanding the process, that knew kind of, kind of it, made, it made me feel all warm inside. And then I did the Mike Kafka video. Oh, dear Lord. And I said nothing wrong in the Kafka video. All I said is a guy has no experience. Pep Hamilton had more experience. I thought he would be a better choice, especially if you're trying to build a offense and a or re, either build, rebuild a, a, a damaged quarterback in Daniel Jones or drafting a quarterback. I thought Pep would be the guy. I said, you know what? Only time will tell if Kafka is going to be the guy or if, or if Dable's going to call the plays. All I said was the fact that we just have to wait and see because no one can tell me he's going to be fantastic and like no one can tell me he's going to be a dud. I was told I was being salty. I was being mean. I was the roller coaster was riding again. No, the roller coaster never rides. I give you my opinion. I tell you what my opinion is. And I stick neck to my convictions. I don't change my I don't change my convictions twice in the same sentence. I tell you what I think. and I tell you what I feel. And it was the intelligence of the fans a few weeks ago that made me smile because it's like, okay, people are finally getting it. They're, some fans are starting to finally understand that, you know what, you, it, it's, everything in here is a crapshoot, so you can be excited about something, but you have to have tempered enthusiasm. And I love it because Dable and the Shane have been saying the same thing. We need to, we need to have realistic expectations. They're trying to set realistic ex expectations for this team, but the fan base, some, well, I'm not saying all fan base. I'd say a very small, maybe a very like 5% of the fan base. And of course those are always the most vocal. Just don't get it. And, and that just, that just made me sad. The New York football giants have been looking for linebackers for years. And we just seem to always pass on them. We always seem to just let them go by the wayside and kind of, you know, I mean, we, we used to draft linebackers. We used to draft linebackers all the time, all the time. And if you go back to the 86 team, there was guy, and I've said this before, there was guys on the 86 team who, who could have started in the league, but they were stuck behind the likes of Carlson, Banks, Taylor, and Reasons. That's the problem. You had Robbie Johnson, Byron Hunt, Andy Hedden, Steve Diossi, guys that could have started Guys that were 6'4", 245, that could have started for multiple teams, but they, the Giants drafted these guys because they understood the importance of the giant linebacker, going back to Sam Huff. And we've kind of let that go for the last 30 years, if not more. We find linebackers either in the later rounds or we have to go out and basically find someone else's linebacker and make them the giant linebacker of yore. So Devin Lloyd is sitting there. And I was thinking, like I said, I'm going to try to do a draft profile video a day. And Devin Lloyd is sitting there. Devin Lloyd is not at the Senior Bowl. Now that's throwing up for some red flags for some people because of the fact that he is, they, they don't know if it's due to injury. In my mind, there's really no reason for Devin Lloyd to go to the Super Senior Bowl because I think he's a top 10 pick either way. So why, if your draft stock is kind of cemented, would you decide to go to a place where you could potentially lose? some lose some of your positioning for the draft. I mean, you still have the combine. You still have your pro days. Lloyd is a fifth year junior coming out. Extremely athletic, quick, agile. He could play in the passing game. 
He's a guy that initially I think a lot of people kind of had him just slated as a two down linebacker. But I think this year alone, he has shown that that is not the case. He had four interceptions this year. Two went for touchdowns. And he had what what was one uh, Stanford at Stanford. (laughs) And the other one was in uh, against Oregon during the Pac-12 championships. He had 111 tackles this year, 22 for a loss, 31 pressure, seven sacks, six pass defenses. For his career, 65 pressures, 15 and a half sacks, 256 total tackles, 150 solo, 43 tackles for lost, eight passes defended, five interceptions, three defensive touchdowns. Wow. Seems like a guy that would kind of fit to the Giants because I think he would fit in either, either or, a 4-3 or 3-4 scheme. You want to take a look at his best games, you go look at the uh, the Arizona game, the Stanford game. Those would be games I would tell you to watch. If you want to if he's a guy or a linebacker, he's to me he's 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 a day one starter. He rarely misses a tackle in the box. He is highly highly productive against the run. If you want to get rid of Blake Martinez and plug and play a guy Lloyd would be the guy. He's got the instincts of a, he's, I always said that because the people that they said that about me, I just didn't have the talent, but I had good football instincts. I had the instincts to know where to be on the field. I could quickly diagnose plays and then locate the football. And that's what he does, except he's got immense talent. And I didn't, he will have, <laughs> he's got, he's got a little bit of a, he, he, it's not a bad thing. And it could, something could be taught. He's got a little bit of a hesitation. And he doesn't locate the ball as quickly at times as he should and diagnose the plays. But that, I think, is just going to come with more and more time. And he's just tough. He's just a tough kid. He's, a, he's another one. We talked about the Linderbaum yesterday who plays through the whistle. Here's another kid that does the same thing. He plays hard and shows emotion. No matter if it's the first minute of the quarter or the last minute of the fourth. There's a competitive toughness about him, which I like. He just plays hard. And like I said, this season really kind of proved, I hope it proved the scouts that he can remain on the field in passing downs. I think a lot of people kind of had him pegged as a two down linebacker. Blake Martinez for all of his ability to, to slice through the, the slice through the offensive lineman. And to get to the ball carrier and diagnose a play, he always had issues, not always, but he, he was up and down in his coverage. You know, some years he was ranked like sixth in the league in coverage for a middle linebacker. And some one year he was like 28th. He bounced around. And honestly, I think that Lloyd can be the, will be the same type. I don't think he's going to bounce around as much because I think he's more athletic than Blake Martinez. But I do think that he is going to have some issues be in the beginning a reference to coverage, but I think once he is worked with, with, you know, with NFL coaches that he is going to, he's going to figure it out. He's, he's going to get better at it. He's going to show better awareness when, if it's going to, if it's going to be a zone or if he's going to be man to man, he'll, he'll sh- when, I think it'll come to him with time. But like I said, he, but if you really want to talk about it, he, he's just a physical defender. He plays downhill. He's a deficient tackler. And it's, it's, it's just something that, like I said, it's a, sometimes if you, if you watch them games, and like I said, go back and watch the Sanford game. And, and that, that'll really just kind of sum up what you're getting. That will really sum, sum it up. He's great at disengaging so he can get to the ball carrier. He's, like I said, he just needs to, and all these things will come with, uh, come with time. He's, he's fantastic at the point of attack. Now, he is not going to be an Isaiah Simmons. He is, he's not going to be a Parsons. His lateral mobility, uh, I was going to say, well, he's a great athlete and has good agility, but he does not move laterally well. And, that'll, and again, I think that'll come with time. He flows to the football great in the middle of the field, but he's just got to work on some of his lateral mobility. That's all. And I think, again, that will come with coaching. He's not a stiff guy. You know, when he's on the field, he flows easily. 
They said he's a lead. To me, he is a leader. He was the captain of the defense. He's an emotional guy as well. So you got to like that. And I think his versatility is really what's going to be his saving grace because of the fact that I'm not even going to say save grace because that makes it sound like he's not a good player. But like I said, he could play in a four, three, he could play in a three, four. He can play. He could play either scheme. Now, the question is, will the giants take, could the giants take him at five? Could the giants take him at seven? I think, whoa, there we go. That music is jumping in. That hasn't happened in a long time because you know what I've done before. I've usually turned the music off. Will he be there or at seven? I think he will be. Will he be there at five? I think he will be as well. I think he, I think he's going to go in the top 10. And I think if he goes top 10, it'll be either eight, nine or 10. So I think he will be for the giants to, to sit there and ponder about, to think about, to, under, you know, and um, like I said, it's an interesting selection because it cures some woes. It'll allow you to release Blake Martinez and still fill the position. It'll bring you a physical force with inside the defense, the guy 6'3", 235. So it's an, it's an interesting prospect. Like I said, this team has so many holes in it. Swiss cheese don't have as many holes as this team does. And this team, it's been like that for two years now. Just nobody ever wanted to listen. Um, but like I said, he could fill a lot of holes on this team. He could add a force that we have not seen in the linebacker position in a long time. It'll, it'll take the sting out of missing on Isaiah Simmons, the Parsons, and Josh Allen, just to name a couple. So we have to just kind of wait and see. We are going to have our big stream on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully everyone can make that. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you like, you can subscribe. Ring that bell, you think what it means. That'd be awesome.